around trying to tell people there is or there isn't a God. My aim would be the outcome of making people better, right? Whether they do it by believing in something or not, that's up to them. Whatever works for them, right? And that kind of works and comes from whatever culture they've been born in, their parents, their siblings, the people around them, things around them, situations around them. And so, yeah, I mean, so which I, background have you come from, if you, if you don't mind me asking? I came from India. Originally. India? Yeah. Okay, so what is it like, like, what is it singularly that's dissuaded you? It didn't dissuade me. Yep. I simply understood the deeper reasons why it exists. And if I extract the reasons, I realized, for example, I, I kind of went in a bit of a wave where I went from practicing to hating it to now being like okay i see the point good and for example when i was hating it i wouldn't pray or anything yes but now i do understand the value of meditation and what prayer automatically gets you to do which is good for the human body which i do now not with the sense of trying to talk to god or anything but purely from a good for my body and good for my mental health perspective right so what we say as you may be aware that that is intrinsically placed within you the, the arabic word is fitra which means the inner inner innate disposition to recognize your creator so what we say then as people of faith particularly is that we're only on this earth for a limited time and we're not going to be here in another hundred years as an example neither yeah. myself or yourself were here hundred years ago so in the interim period we have to observe that for us to reject a creator out of hand is folly in the sense that a universe which is where we're, li where we're living in where well, we live on earth but within the universe something so astronomical so you know so vast we commonly say that's impossible that it could have just come about by sheer chance but it has happened it's happened so it suggests to us that various sound reasoning philosophical reasoning as to why we believe that there is a creator and i and i respect that okay right? and it, see, yeah. it, for us for me particularly there's more of a weightage on there being a creator as opposed to there not being a creator Why? because of the fact that for well, several reasons normally speaking the universe within itself so established science tells us it came into existence some 13.8 billion years ago so it must have come from something and we That's know our mere human thinking though because in our world everything comes from something so yes, we're precisely. Simply applying that to the universe, so which that's doesn't all, necessarily apply. But that's what, just not. It's beyond our understanding. So, so then, yeah. so then, what we do as thinking-minded individuals, we look at the uh, the um, try to find a reason. Yeah. Yeah. So then we look at the possibilities per as per the intellect or the human mind, yeah. which we cannot go beyond. Of course. So yeah. if we look at the various logical understandings, one you would imply a universe from nothing which essentially makes no sense whatsoever. To our human From, minds, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's all we yeah. can do, can't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. That's all we'll be given faculty and reason. I can tell you something, but my mind is still just as incapable as any other. So, so yeah. okay, so far we've both established we're both human beings, so let's use yeah. our mind. Yeah. So, in this context, what we say then, a universe from nothing is definitively nonsensical. In our world view. Yeah, so that's all yeah. we can do, can't we? Exactly. This is yeah. why we've yeah. already established that Absolutely. we're not robots. Absolutely. So what we yeah. can do is think so within think the... At that point, we simply reach the line at which logic says, I don't know, I cannot comprehend. And someone else may want to say, oh, it's because of this, this, this. So what we did, yeah. we, we apply the process of elimination. Yeah. So as I was saying to you, we look at the plausibilities, either a universe from nothing, or the universe ex um, it eternally existed, or a universe which came into existence, or a universe which has always existed. So these are the possibilities. Yeah. So what we then say is, if we look at them singularly, we observe nominally that a universe from nothing is too incomprehensible because logic dictates. For us, yeah. Yeah, again, Absolutely. for us, yeah. that from nothing comes nothing. Okay, everything is contingent upon something else. So what we say but, that the universe is contingent upon itself, that it came into existence some 13.8 billion years ago, as from what established science yeah, is purporting yeah, at the reason, yeah. a, a metaphysical event occurred, which is beyond the comprehension well, of science. How do you define metaphysical? Beyond the realms of the universe. So yeah, not, not, outside of space-time, yeah. Yeah, precisely. Sure. 
time, space, matter, energy, dark matter. Everything uh, we have. Everything we have, which is yeah. comprehensible. Yeah. Protons, electrons, oh, neutrons, yeah, yeah, yeah. the forces of nature. It must have been placed in there in order for the universe to come into... Why placed in there? Because that's how the universe... Because science tells us when the energy went forth and helium and hydrogen went forth as a result of the ex explosion taking place, the Big Bang taking place, which is the model which is currently prevailing yeah. amongst the scientific model. Yeah. So right. that tells us that it must have come from something beyond the scope of the universe, beyond the remit of the um, intrinsic um, elements from within the universe. So by this pretext, what we then observe... I don't know if that pretext is fully believed because if you if you theoretically create a perfect vacuum, you end up getting particles created out of nothing, even right now. That's something that um, I think uh, Lawrence Krauss tried to uh, purport to, but in fact, even those elements where particles pop into existence, they all have the essential components of elements within them, which allow them to do as such. This is what he commonly argued um, in, in, in his book. And what happened essentially was that it was shown that particles which do pop in and out of existence, they've got already predetermined elements which are already there, which enable them to come into, um, into and popping in and out of existence. So even he says himself, where he commonly tries to show a universe from nothing, but what he's actually defining is the universe from something. Something what has initiated this, the starting point to the universe. To something again we can comprehend, like so, a god or something. So why does it have to be the yeah. case? is because if we look at the universe as a whole, it's contingent, everything is contingent upon something else. So the universe in itself is contingent in the set that it's come in the form of parts. The universe is in the form of parts, which has come together and formed the universe. That something has to be outside that set of, of, of individuality of um, parts in order for it to be initiated. It must be outside of that contingent set of things. And it can, and it has to be, and it cannot be any other way. That, for example, we, why is there existence as opposed to non-existence? So this shows to us that the fact that the universe has come into existence and it's commonly understood it's come from different parts, and hence what we understand it must have come from something outside of that set of parts, which Fair would have been, yeah. which would have been definitively yeah. independent as opposed to the dependency Fair of these enough. of yeah. these entities within that contingent set of things. Fair so enough. therefore. By reasoning the way we've done, it then points to something beyond the universe. Allah says in the Quran, for example, yeah. say he's Allah the one, the eternally besought of all. He begetteth not, neither is begotten, and there is nothing like unto him. That's so the that, part where I split up. So this yeah. is where I've tried to reason yeah, yeah. with you objectively yeah, 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 yeah. to show yeah. to you the centrality I understand where you're of the contingency yeah. argument. You've got yeah. So, I mean, this will be quite a, um, a lengthy discussion, but if you want to, if I'm happy to go through with it in terms of the, the, uh, the statements which I've, I've, I've purported yeah. to, and to expound further, to look at the objections to that, and then to reason with you to understand the, these, the, the nominal points that are made. So, in terms of the, my singular point about the universe having parts and coming into existence in the form of these parts being dependent upon each other, but they had to be outside of this set, and therefore it required something independent for these dependent contingent That's things. That's I'm okay to, Super. Okay to so, the, so then what is the alternative Obviously then? Obviously there's no comprehension at that level for us, but it's, it's a theory I can say, yeah, okay, there might be something outside of the universe. Yes, beca sure. because... But giving yeah. it a name or calling it something which... Okay, let's not give anything. it a... Let's not give it, but yeah. what, what uh, our logic again, our mind, our intellect establishes essentially that something, which is just say this a basic as a mobile phone, it would require a willful mind to have made the first mobile phone. Yeah, of course. Yes? Yeah. So it's impossible to believe an inanimacy, like nothingness, can make something as vast as the universe. So hence it requires a conscious will. But it's one of the possibilities that there's something outside the universe that built it. Well, we've reasoned both, that out. Both yeah. that and the possibility of something, the whole universe coming out of nothing, yeah is just as possible as something being outside of the universe making it because 
both of those options are equally incomprehensible. By no, shall I tell you why your first, the, the, the former, is invalid? Because logic dictate, dictates but that the, something but that my from not is the logic we are talking about yes. is one hundred percent correct. What you're saying, okay, based on the world around us, right? The logic has been built from zero, right? From people or apes not being able to talk to each other to where we are now, where we have thousands of languages, where we can communicate this logic in various ways and various signs, and symbols, and mathematics. We have come to whatever point we are at now. The level of understanding of logic has being built based on the world around us yeah and anybody that came in and said when you open a glass bottle of water the water goes straight up yes. will be denied that because it doesn't match the real world right yeah so someone that comes and says if you open the bottle of water water will stay in if you you know tip the water out, fall over then the water will fall out yeah, so someone on gravity that, they will it, yeah. believe it right? right because it matches with the real world so similarly what you're saying that there has to be someone or a consciousness or some kind of will to make the universe it definitely matches the logic that is around all of us good but that logic applies to the world we are in the universe we are in not necessarily to the outside of the universe so what you're saying is a possibility but what we're saying what i'm saying is also equally a possibility because it's outside of the realms of our logic but just to pause yeah about. but just to pause there for a moment yeah then the fact that the universe has come into existence, yeah. your argument then would be so disproportionate in the sense that something has been created from nothing. Which because is the thing we cannot imagine. We cannot imagine. Yeah. So hence, yeah. by proxy, yeah. what we're doing, by the points that are made to you, something beyond the universe, something so astronomically powerful has created this. Okay, and that's for that, a total possibility. Yeah, yeah, that's a total. Yeah. I would say it's a totally reasonable position to take because yeah, what we absolutely. do, totally we yeah. yeah. So the other things which you've mentioned to form some sort of coherent argument, they fall flat on their face in many regards. According to the logic you firmly believe in. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. logic which I. Yeah. But this is logic which I would hasten to give you something to recognize. But for, for the reason. Which I completely adhere to. Yeah. In our universe. Yeah. But when we're talking about outside the universe. Ne nothing in the universe can say what I say can apply to outside the universe. It can only be yeah, so a that's possibility. Yeah, so yeah. That, yeah, well, I mean, again, we're saying that, but uh, singularly speaking, we still got to address the point of the, the fact that it come is, comes into existence. Yeah. Now, yeah. again, it has to have something which is conscious, something which is inanimate, yeah. cannot create something. From That's nothing again, based comes, on our logic in yeah. the world. That's yeah. all we can do, see? Exactly. Again, we're going, yeah. we seem to be going somewhat uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. circularly. Yeah. Yeah. So, in essence, I've broke up some you can perhaps watch this little discussion we have tonight. It's been recorded. Okay. Okay. And um, you can just review and just pause and reflect yeah. Yeah. on some of the points that I've said. Yeah. And then we can, you know, touch base. But in terms of then um, going further on, in terms of there being a creator, it makes perfect sense then that if there is a creator, that he's not made to us purposelessly. That makes no sense whatsoever that he simply said okay i've created you get on with it i won't send you any guidance i won't give you an objective contact on how you want to live but by the way i'll judge you and then if you're going to um uh, uh, enjoy the, the hereafter by paradise and then you're oh you're going to be succumbed to the hellfire so he's going to send you the guidance that you require so for example the common uh, example that i like to give but people had to search for that it wasn't given. Well, I'll yeah. explain. Yeah. So this mobile phone, for example, if I was to hand it over to you, you've never seen a mobile phone before. I tell you, you can speak to one person from one end of the world to the other. I hand it over to you. You don't know how to operate it. What's the first thing you're going to ask with the mobile phone to operate it? How do I use it? How do you use it? So what would you need? An instruction, a manual. Yeah. So hence the equivocation then would be that our creator has given us a guidance in the form of scripture on how to lead our lives normally to recognize him then to ascertain that we are limited beings and we have been given life in it so which is miraculous what about all the poor people that existed before religion started before religion started so as i said we have got to believe that everyone has got an innate disposition towards our creator a recognition of, of our creator so just say you were deserted um, let's say a child born on a deserted island with no inhabitants around somehow or another he gains sustenance Okay, then he grows up into a man. He's going to think to himself that my creator is unlike the creation. Whatever has created me is beyond that remit, you see. So in essence, 
when we speak about those nominal other points that you made about you know i think you mentioned the problem of evil is that what you mentioned in, 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 so what do you what was, a, what was the point you just uh i said what about the people who were unaware of the creator yeah yeah so in, in, yeah scriptures okay yeah. so intrinsically speaking that understanding of a creator would make nominal sense even if you are a person who's never heard of a one creator okay it makes much more sense just logically applying the mind that it has to be one it can't be a multitude if there are many creators then just say for example they come into conflict with uh, one another on any particular issue or even more so um who created that upon who created that so there would be a hierarchical which makes no sense it's like going into extreme forms of odd um, uh, polytheistic beliefs so a singular one being who's the creator of the whole universe that is what we refer to as allah the one true god the god what's your thoughts on other religions excellent this is a very good question and it's a question easily answered and it makes sense allah says in the quran let's come to a common terms as between us, the Muslims, and you, mainly speaking the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, but for everyone in general, that we worship none than the one true God. Now you come from an Indian background, so you'll be perhaps familiar to an extent, I'm assuming, uh, with respect to on Hinduism and other such religions. Yeah. Singularly speaking, even those faiths espouse that there's only one true God. If you read the Bhagavad Gita or the Upanishad, so why is there so much difference between? I'm, I'm going to give you, ones. I'm going to give you elongated answer, which will satisfy you, I'm sure. So, and I'm trying to be very brief as well within that yeah, response. Yeah. So, essentially speaking, all these world religions espouse one God, to whom no partners or associates should be given to that Creator. So that Creator is unlike His creation. Not a man, not a woman, not an idol, not a statue, or whatever you ca the case may be. Even these other world religions which are deemed as polytheistic, they espouse that view. What happens though, the major protagonists of, this of these faiths, whether it's Christianity, Hinduism, or whatever the case may be, the, cent the central figure of that faith, they never claim to be God. It's the third party narratives, which are writing in addition to statements from that um, uh, major protagonist, which then purport to that individual giving him a higher context of a divine being. But despite them giving them, this, th these people giving um, such individuals a higher pretext and equivocating them to God to an extent, they always fall short of equivocating these individuals to God himself. So I'll give you a classic example which will really resonate with you, amongst, amongst the Christians in particular. They make Jesus to be God, okay? Despite the fact that the man himself made no such claim in the New Testament, number one. So then when you observe, why do they believe this? It's because the third party narratives within the texts, because there are a multiplicity of different authorship within, within the Gospels, for example, they make that individual to be elevated to God's status. However, never being God. So this then, it's like a snowball effect, which then merges. The more you roll a snowball, the bigger effect it happens. So later in Christian history, they equivocated God as with Jesus and made Jesus as God, despite the fact he himself says there's only one true God and he is the messenger of God. Even in the Bible, amazingly, the Islamic concept that there's only one God and, and God sends messengers of which Jesus is one. He even says that upon himself. So what we're observing essentially within these scriptures, and this is just an example that I've given you, that God is one, nothing like the creator. So when Allah says, let's come to a common terms as between all of us, we worship the none than the one true God. The unseen God, the one who we are all going to return so to. So, what would be the reason? To Does that make sense? Were you happy with that response? So, what happens then? When we understand by proxy, all these religions are espousing one God. Islam is the only religion which actually claims to be the only uncorrupted book on the face of this earth, in the sense that it's a universal message for all of mankind. Whereas the other world scriptures were nominally there for singularly for those individuals at that particular time. So I again refer to the New Testament as an example for the Christians. Jesus upon whom be peace says, um, I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go not forth to the Gentiles, meaning the non-Jews. They only came for a select people at a select time. Whereas the Quran revealed by Allah through the conduit of the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, the final message given by, to God by mankind, but given by God to mankind, is uncorrupted in its source. It's a verbatim, singular chain of narration going through the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, uncorrupted. And Allah is inviting everyone to come to a common terms. And then once we understand who our creator is, a one supreme being as you as your next Muslim, you'll be fully aware. This is the relentless theme of Islam, the Tawheed, the oneness of God, to whom we give no partners or no associates. When we then 
when we then decipher and then we look under the layers of all the other world scriptures and we do a bit of a study, then we come to that same conclusion. Hmm, by the way, that's what even the Bhagavad Gita teaches. Oh, that's what the New Testament teaches. So when the Quran comes as God's final revelation, the Prophet Muhammad is referred to as Illa Rahmatan Lil Alameen, the mercy for all of mankind. The only one who made that claim to be mercy for all of mankind, a universal prophet. So uh, this is the reason why it then resonates and hence Islam definitively is different from all the other world's religions. Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christian, they take... The people that are following other religions? So what I would say to them, first thing first, understand your concept of God as to what God is and what God isn't. Read your scriptures, read what they say, read the centrality of the message being given by the major protagonist. Those major protagonists never invite divinity upon themselves. And then when we decipher through them and we note, oh, these are third party narratives who are elevating these people to the status of God. However, still falling short of equivocating them to the almighty God. Like Christians, for example, and I, why do I use Christians and it is, as an example, I've done some study on it. We're living in a country which was Christian, shall we just say. Now it's just totally left that left the face. However, just to give you a, an example, when we ask them to invite to some understanding what does Jesus say upon him, who he is himself and who God is. So once it resonates with them, no, these guys are making sense. There's only one true God. God sends messengers. Jesus claimed to be a messenger in the Bible, very clear, verbatimly, without any um, shadow of a doubt. So why are we all believing in other entities other than God? So the centrality of that Islamic message would be one God, unlike this creation. God is the only one worthy of worship. Let's not associate partners with him. Once we get to that common understanding, then there's a, there are ways that we can all maneuver together. For example, we pray five times a day. Did you know in the Bible, the prophets in the Old Testament, they prayed the exact same way as we do. In Nehemiah chapter eight, verses four and six, they bowed it down to God in Ruku, as you know what Ruku is, and then kneeled in prostration to God as well, saying, praising God, saying Amin, standing in lines and congregation. Before they would offer their praise, they would do wudu, they would do ablution. This is all testified within their scriptures as well, and they would give glory to God, which is what Jesus lived. So what we're here to make people aware, this is your responsibility to your creator and your creator so alone. what is your end goal? What, what our end goal basically is to invite everyone to Islam so everyone can become Why? Muslims because then they can understand that this is the best way to connect with your Creator. Allah Why? says in the Quran, because it's for our betterment, our acknowledgement that you've so got to. Angel, so connect with the Creator so that you become better. Yes. So, so it has to be. Is you become better. Absolutely. So right. it's, 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 it's not just a, uh, uh, an outward um, partaking of certain actions. Yeah. The actions that you do have to better you. So, for example, exactly. if we fast. And better me, and if everybody does it, everyone would be better in general. Precisely. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, obviously, for, for example, if we fast yeah. and we're hungry or thirsty throughout the daylight hours, and then we're not learning any lesson by then. Um, just say in the state of fasting, backbiting or doing dodgy dealings or whatever, God doesn't need that, that type of fast. It's to better. And then obviously it's to understand how those who are less fortunate than you yeah. are going through. So that this was something which is also ordained in the previous scriptures, fasting, giving charity. But the beauty of the religion of Islam in its essence, it's a completion of God's law to mankind. And it formats itself in that way, thus incorporating and understanding the teachings given to the other people of other religions. So commonly, we understand that Allah sent about from some consensus 124,000 messengers to mankind, prophets, to guide them onto this path to worship God and God alone. And that was the centrality of the message through history, you see. And when we, when we dive into their scriptures, this is what we come out as a conclusion as well. So this is the beauty of the matter. Hence, my friend, I want to invite you back to Islam. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the, if your end goal is to make people better by doing the things which make them better for themselves and not hurt anybody outside, that is a path I'm on at the moment. There's always room for improvement. Yes. And there's always learning going on in all aspects of life. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. And at that same juncture, <coughs> we also need to be aware that our creator you know, we, we, have, we have a responsibility to our Creator. If you've got two nice eyes, just say, for example, I offer you 50 million pounds for both those eyes and you will be blind for the rest of your life. Would you accept that money? Not a chance, not a chance. The air that we breathe, God has given it to, yeah. given it to us. Gratitude is yeah. if I, if I, if, if you were in trouble and you asked me for 100,000 pounds, I gave it to you. Are you going to thank me? Or are you going to thank the third person? You're going to thank me. Yeah. So what about the Creator who's given you all this? 
we yeah. should be Allah says in the Quran in, indeed man is at a loss and man is internally ungrateful so we need to reflect on these points and to really consider as we move forward in our life and understand why why does he want this if we pray to God does it boost his supposed ego no it's Allah has that relationship with us that he wants us to recognize him and to appreciate him and to understand that you are going to return to him one day and you'll be accountable for your actions on this earth okay and it makes perfect sense in every way we have regular discussions with people of different faiths different so we've, we believe we've got strong argumentation you know, we're well we're reasonably well versed in all the arguments that we can have with whoever wants to challenge us but not that we say it in a form of argument but in a, yeah. in, a, in a form of reasoning and understanding yeah. and hence that's the objective yeah, absolutely understand. And I think I think the end goal should be and is, as you clearly stated, that people become better and don't hurt others. And yeah, just And recognize your creator. Do things Very, which, it, it, yeah. Do things which are positive for the world around you. Yeah, positive. Be grateful for everything you have, every little thing that you take for granted. Yeah, and you that's might talk, talk to me about my eyes and breathing, but there's way more things which I've taken for granted, which if you go into detail, you'll see are there. Of not course. Not only in our bodies, but around us. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. But that's again, that is all to the glory of our Creator. But those essential things, those two eyes, everything else will be nominal. Yeah. You know, whatever you're going for, you've got sight, you can breathe, you can eat. Yeah. These are the essential components. So yeah. we'll be tested in our lives, and you know, people who, you know, um, acknowledge that point and humble themselves. You know, the, for the humble-hearted, that is what it's all about. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Your nice speaking, Mustafa. 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 Okay. Nice you can watch our discussion on a two um, Islamic uh, dawah station. Dawah means invitation to Islam. So the Sam dawah. Okay. And I'll dawah to the Sam S A M. Okay. And Dawa D A W A H. S A M D A W A H. Yeah, that's it. That's on YouTube. Okay. Cool. And the other one is Dawa Two. That's the figure two. Soul S O U L. Okay. Okay. So have a good read, watch of that, and then you know, share it with your friends or whatever, and you reflect on the. We're here regularly over this um, uh, Hajj period, inviting people to you know to Islam. So good enjoy, enjoy Thank speaking. You, Take care of yourself. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Myself, I agree with the fact that